So first, what I do in every clinic appointment with every one of my Parkinson's patients is I'm going to break it down into three overarching categories. We're going to address motor symptoms in Parkinson's patients, that's slowness, tremor, stiffness, and balance problems. These are kind of medication therapies that we can use to address them. So slowness, Again, AKA bradykinesia is gonna best respond to dopaminergic therapy. Things like Cinemet, carbidopa, levodopa, repenerol, premapexol, any of those things. Um, we have adjunct therapies like resagiline and tacopone. And again, the, the laundry list of, of Parkinsonian therapies is well beyond the scope of this talk today. Um, but the point is, is bradykinesia responds to dopamine. Bradykinesia also responds to exercise and physical therapy itself. Tremor, the resting tremor of Parkinson's, only responds to dopamine 50% of the time. So when we start Cinemet in a patient, I specifically tell them, I don't care how your tremor responds. I do care how your walking responds, your coordination, your dexterity, your finger taps, you're getting out of the chair, you're getting out of bed, etc. I care about your mobility, not your tremor, when I start Cinemet, because Cinemet Tremor only responds to cinnamon or dopamine therapy 50% of the time. We can use alternative medications like anticholinergic medicines like Artane, also known as trihexaphenidol or cogentin, also known as benzotropine. The stiffness rigidity responds well to dopamine. So that's the second thing that I tell patients I want, to, I want them to pay attention to. I want them to pay attention to the slowness and the stiffness. Most importantly, when we start cinnamon, to establish sentiment responsiveness. Again, anticholinergics can help. Often we don't use artane and cogentin because they have horrible side effect profiles. But again, that's getting into the weeds of pharmaco, um, pharmacology. Ultimately, physical therapy is our one in our best treatment, kind of regular exercise and physical therapy to balance problems. As, and it's important to understand that DBS, nor medication, Cinemet, is going to help somebody that has postural instability. It is not going to help postural instability itself. It is only going to help, um, or kind of postural instability is only really helped by exercise itself. So then we also want to address the non-motor symptoms like sleep, thinking, mood, constipation, and fatigue. Sleep is a huge one. So when we are kind of assessing patients for DBS, when we're assessing patients' cognition, if they're not sleeping well, I can assure you they are not going to be thinking well. These things are, go hand in hand. And this is even true for people. This is true of all people, right? Meaning you as medical students, if you are not sleeping well, you are not going to learn well. You are not going to think well. In order to think well, we have to be well rested. Sleep is essential for that. So often when somebody complains of thinking, the first question that comes out of my mouth is how are you sleeping? Are you talking in your sleep? Do you have sleep apnea? What's going on? About 60 to 70% of patients that have Parkinson's have intrinsic sleep problems. Um, mood is another big one. So mood, kind of about 80% of Parkinson's patients are gonna have some degree of anxiety or depression. Constipation is in the mid nineties actually, 95% of patients have constipation. And fatigue is another kind of common non-motor symptom. And again, we're going to address these individually, um, but they're very important to keep on your radar because these are going to be things that are a huge impact in patients' quality of life, none of which are going to respond to Cinemet or, or DBS, right? When we do DBS, it's not going to make somebody think better. It's not going to make somebody sleep better. It's only going to help um, their physical symptoms. And then ultimately, I always kind of bring up to patients that in order for any of us to be healthy, this is the trifecta of health. We should be physically active, physically healthy, mentally active, mentally healthy, and socially active, socially healthy. This doesn't happen by chance. This is, requires effort. Obviously, COVID has made an impact in this, right? So I've had lots of patients that have really had a big decline, both because their physical activity decreased as well as their social activity. And then that also subsequently decreased their mental activity. So these are essential to being healthy. And no matter what we do, whether it's DBS, medications, whatever it is, this has to be our focus. We have to be living our life. We have to be doing healthy things in order to stay healthy. 
everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.